Overseas now, and tonight Israel once again at the center of a complicated conundrum. Does it retaliate against Iran, or does it use the foiled attack last Sunday as a kind of entryway to forge a new peace? Most of the world, including President Biden, is hoping for the latter. That attack by hundreds of drones and ballistic and cruise missiles could have been catastrophic, of course. But the joint effort between Israel and its allies thwarted any major damage or casualties. That's the good news. But what's next? That's the big question. I want to see reporter Josh Einiger live in Jerusalem with this conundrum. Josh? Well, Bill, it's a conundrum to be sure. The War Cabinet uh, here in Israel under Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu adjourned for a third straight day. They have not publicly said what their plans are. But their plans do not appear, as you suggest, to be a lasting peace. Not by the rhetoric of the military commanders we heard from today. At a dusty military base in the south of Israel. We cannot stand still from this kind of aggression. Iran will not get scot-free. The IDF's military commanders told reporters they will respond as they stood beside this massive ballistic missile. They say they recovered and towed back here for study. You are looking now at the guts of an Iranian ballistic missile. This is the fuel cell. This is how it was powered for its 12-minute flight between Iran and Israeli airspace. This was found just on the bed of the Dead Sea. It's one of 110 ballistic missiles that raced toward Israeli airspace Saturday night as Iran launched an unheard of barrage of more than 300 lethal projectiles from its own soil and into Israel. <laughs> Allied forces successfully fended off 99% of the onslaught, sending inert pieces like these crashing to the ground. Israel vows to fight back, but how and when is the question, as Iran claims it's simply trying to deter Israel and not the other way around. Instead of making accusations, the Western countries should appreciate the Islamic Republic of Iran's restraint and responsible actions towards the stability and safety in the region. Behind the scenes, the White House has told Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu it won't participate in any offensive measures, and it's strongly urging the Israelis to exhibit restraint. Today I asked the Army's chief spokesman how they'd prevent a deadly escalation. How do you respond without further escalating this conflict? We will respond the way that we will choose at the time that we will choose. We don't just have defensive capabilities who were proven on Saturday night. We have offensive capabilities, and we will know what to do and when to do and how to do. And we will not know what, when or how until the Israeli war cabinet and the IDF decide to make that clear to the world. The Biden administration pushing hard to try to convince Israel to pump the brakes. But at the same time today, the State Department said Israel is a sovereign country and it will do what it chooses to do. We're live in Jerusalem, Josh Heinegger, Channel 7, Eyewitness News.